This is what we've been waiting for. This is the loss of control in flight toolkit. The entire presentation I've been talking about, what do we need to do as pilots? What strategy do we apply? Because we have the training, we get into a situation, we recognize it, been there, see it. But I can tell you right now, there's a tremendous amount of things that have to be solved. Ankle attack, airspeed, pitch, bank, energy, speed, use of speed brakes, trim. We're faced with all these situations, autopilot, secondary flight controls, pitch response, pitching moments, all sorts of stuff have to be considered. And it's unfair for us to believe that we are going to know how to address all that unless we have a strategy and a plan to deal with a wide diversity of situations. And I'm going to give you a very simple strategy to remember that as we go through this. Okay, first step is remember I talked about stop. Remember I held my hand up earlier and I said stop. That is the first step. We recognize that something has met our threshold, okay? And what is the threshold? Inappropriate airspeed. That could be unintentional slow flight, approach to stall, stall, high airspeed, whatever it might be. Could be pitch, could be bank. As soon as we recognize that how we got there doesn't matter, what else we were doing doesn't matter, now it's time to take effective action, okay? So the first thing is getting the stop sign up. And remember that hand, stop is the first step. The next step, is I want you to remember, okay, is push. Okay, see the hand going this way, push? So we put our hand up and we push, okay? Now, it doesn't mean we always push. What pushing is doing is it's reducing angle of attack. Now, in the beginning, we saw AC 120, 109, 109A, the IK manual and UPRT, nose high, nose low, and other resources just over and over and over again, is that if angle of attack is an issue or a primary consideration, it has to be addressed first, okay? Does that make sense? We recognize it, stop, and now push. But again, is it appropriate to push, okay? In a scenario where we're nose low, unstalled, diving at the ground, clearly, that's a time for us to pull back, to manage the dive and managing the G-load on the airplane to keep it within limits. But because of the prevalence of pilots to pull, it is very unlikely and rare that that nose low situation was developed through inattention or something other than perhaps a trim runaway nose down, which is another scenario that would be required for an alternate control strategy, for example. Okay, so stop and push. How does that work? Well, think about the stall. We got to recognize that somehow we got to the stall. We should have recognized the inappropriate airspeed, the approach to stall, the warning, the buffet, whatever it might be. Now we're in a situation of the airplane being stalled. Okay, it's buffeting, inability to control descent, dynamic roll instability, okay, often accompanied by a continuous stall warning. If we got to that point, stopping is absolutely critical. And what does pushing do? it reduces angle of attack and takes us out of that dramatic situation back into the envelope where the airplane can fly using traditional traditional control inputs. Now, it may not be a very nice flight attitude, okay? We may end up stalling like we saw in the uh, the Colgan situation where it's stalled and due to dynamic roll instability, the airplane gets overbanked, but we have to push and solve the stall first. That's the only thing we can effectively uh, uh, or address right now is a reduction angle of attack to get positive control of the airplane. Okay, so what's the next step? Okay, it's going to be roll. So here's a great scenario. We did this stall and a roll off and we pushed to reduce angle of attack. Okay, we recognized and stopped. And now we need to reorient the lift vector and roll it back to wings level. How about the nose high situation? What's the primary threat nose high? It's not hitting the ground, okay? It's not even really running out of energy. The big threat nose high is actually getting into the nose high stall. So what do we do? We push to reduce angle of attack. Okay, if that's sufficient to get the nose down, then we don't need to do the roll step, okay? Stop, push, and roll. If we do need to roll to get the nose down, either forward elevators not getting the nose down, okay, then we can roll in some bank to help roll off the lift vector, to help the nose come down earlier, to help us get more energy on the airplane, have more controllability and roll out of it, okay? Nose low over bank, unloaded roll, okay? Why do we unload nose low? Number one, minimize dive angle, optimize roll rate, eliminate asymmetric loading on the airplane, okay? So this process of recognizing, reducing angle of attack, if it's appropriate, reorienting the lift vector if appropriate, and then finally stabilizing the airplane. Okay, and I show that with a fist here is the key. 
This fundamental strategy, if you start marrying up this fundamental strategy with all the techniques and guidance in the industry from ICAO all the way down to the FAA, and you look at the recommended techniques of your manufacturer, of the organizations, the, the people looking at developing techniques for you to use, very often you are going to see that these match up. Now, some situations may be stop, okay, push, all right, energy management first, then roll, then roll out, and then stabilize. Okay, a more complicated scenario, but at the end of the day, it's still these fundamental steps. We need to then think about how do we integrate secondary flight controls like trim and speed brakes, gear, configuration changes. Okay, so all of those considerations play a part, but you and your state of being a 75 IQ, you need to have a plan on how to move forward, and that strategy has to be effective. But I can tell you right now that this video is insufficient for you to really have access to these skill sets. We've talked about the academic understanding of what leads to this, the aerodynamic uh, contributions to these various, various steps, but the actual practical experience of being in that reduced mental state and applying a strategy, whether it's this one or another one, simply takes practice and it takes experience. Okay, so stall, attitudes, no, nose up, nose low, nose high, high back, combinations, alternate strategies, all right, pitch offset, roll offset, yaw offset, okay, all of these can be addressed by a strategy, and it's nice to have one you can go to that's relatively simple, okay, so there's your toolkit, think about it, think about it simply, now just because it's simple doesn't mean it's not comprehensive, that's a common misinterpretation of a strategy. All right, let's wrap it up. What I'd like to do right now is I'd like to go ahead and go um, to the video again. Oh, let me go back. I'd like to go ahead and go to the video. Uh, and I'd like to now watch it from a few seconds back to that situation where the pilot says, and I know just what to do. And we saw the instructor previously coming in and talking about the steps. In fact, he was going through the steps of the AC-120-109. So remember what's going on here. Well, we have an autopilot failure. Now he's at low altitude. The airplane is approaching the ground and the airplane is saying, pull up, pull up, okay? But because of this situation at an inappropriate airspeed, the pilot really needs to manage his energy state and reduce angle of attack to get out of the airplane upset to fly away from it, okay? So by having an understanding of taking effective action and recognizing the situation, this pilot, despite the decision-making that led him to that particular scenario, snaps out of it, remembers what the appropriate step was, reduction of angle of attack, regain control of the airplane, manage energy state and get away from the ground and saves the day, okay? Now remember, in an ideal world, through proper decision-making, proficiency, understanding and managing your systems, is that we hope, of course, that we're never there in the first place. Let's go ahead and watch uh, the end of the video here. Whoa. Pull up. Pull up. As John realizes he's about to lose control of the airplane, his mind flashes back to a recurrent training session. Remember, John, you fly the airplane, don't let it fly you. We're going to recognize and confirm the situation. Be sure your autopilot's off. Reduce your angle of attack. Apply nose down pitch until the warning cues are eliminated. John realizes it's time to get out in front of his airplane. And with a renewed confidence, he knows exactly what the next move needs to be. Uh, Phenom 9 Mike Kilo is on a missed approach. And uh, is there another airport around here with better weather? Phenom 9 Mike Kilo, Roger, climb and maintain 2000. Turn left heading 360. Now that John has the airplane back under control, he agrees that Lauderdale Executive is his new destination. In almost no time at all, John spots the welcoming runway lights of Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport. Proceed to the end of the runway. Turn left to clear the runway. All right, thanks to our uh, Phenom 9 Mike Kilo. Uh, nice to be here. We'll turn off left at the end and ground when we clear. Later that evening, John thinks about the important lessons he's learned today. While he never completely lost control of the airplane, John came mighty close. He also realizes how just one or two better decisions made earlier in the arrival, like staying further away from the weather for instance, would have kept his anxiety in check and probably avoided most of the chaos in the first place. But it all comes down to the same thing. John will be a better pilot next time. Much better.
What we've talked about today is in direct alignment with the aviation industry around the world. You can see the resources that we have here all the way from the Airplane Upset Recovery Training Aid through the ICAO manual and UPRT to some of the resources that we have talked about. It's really critical that when pilots go through training, whether that's awareness, prevention, or recovery training, is that that training is in accordance with the ICAO manual on UPRT, which is the overarching document that guides all of these efforts in addition to the Airplane Upset Recovery Training Aid. One document that I want to bring your attention to that I mentioned earlier, for those airlines or for those individual operators or those flight departments wanting to now develop upset prevention and recovery training, please go to this resource is that the guidance material for best practices and really implementing upset prevention and recovery training written by IATA. And don't think of IATA as an airline industry only. Remember, IATA is responsible for training pilots all the way from the cadet level right into the left seat of their heavy transport category airplanes. Great document, complete complement to all the industry resources we've talked about and also the concepts we presented in this video. So how do we arm ourselves? I want to give you an opportunity to get information to start you in the right direction. You can go to this, go to the tinyurl.com slash NBAA dash SPSSD. NBAA single pilot safety stand down and you'll have an opportunity to have a free download and in that free download you're going to see a UPRT buyer's guide it's actually uh, produced by APS but it's not about using our program our program is one option but it actually gives you a checklist of what to look for what questions to ask when you're looking for an upset training provider and of course APS will be submitted to those same questions uh, if you wish but you can go ahead and go ahead and download that we're going to include a discussion on threat and error management and also angle of attack for example, in general aviation, there's this big push on integrating angle of attack indicators. Certainly they can help, but not without proper training. So go ahead. Uh, there's no catch and no cost. It's unbiased. It's there to help you. Please write down that URL and go ahead and fill out that form today. I think you're going to enjoy that reading and start your process towards finding both academic and practical training to be better prepared for uh, airplane upsets and most importantly to mitigate loss of control in flight. So, what are your takeaway items? Number one, go take the survey. Go ahead and get that information. Okay, loss of control in flight is getting worse. We saw the statistics. And in fact, just recently, there's been another statistic issued that shows that this year is now that loss of control in flight, even though the number of fatalities has come down, it's now 43% of all fatalities in aviation. That's the highest percentage it has ever had. So loss of control is not going away and it requires you as the pilot to take effective action. The global aviation industry is on this, okay? So don't assume that you know what upset prevention and recovery training is. Don't assume it's just stall training. Do not assume it's unusual attitude to training or aerobatics. It is very much more comprehensive than that, and it's developing transferable skill sets to help you to be effective in an unexpected situation, to give you the ability to get the airplane back into the heart of the envelope. Put on your armor. Remember that you are vulnerable, okay? You're not invulnerable. Distraction can get everybody, as we saw in our video. And remember that we have to gain skill and knowledge beyond the training limit, which is only 11% of the all-attitude environment. 11%. Nearly 90% of the envelope that your airplane can fly in, you don't have training on how to deal with it. Get a skill set and a knowledge to be able to affect that. Uh, and lastly, remember our strategy. When you get to a situation where you know you're in trouble, and as I said in an airplane upset, it will have your full attention is know how to deal with it. Remember, it's going to be stop, okay? Put that hand up, stop. That's the first step, okay? And uh, what the next step is going to be push, all right, and roll and stabilize, okay? And we use that with a fist. So stop, push, roll, stabilize. Remember that, okay? It's going to be key to success and survival, but get practical training. I'd like to thank you for your time today. It's been a great uh, honor presenting this information to you. I hope that you found it informative, and I do encourage you to go out and seek out academic and practical training. Uh, I am just representing the MBAA Safety Committee. I'm not here to promote APS, but I am here to promote upset prevention and recovery training and seeking a solution that works for you and your flight department. It doesn't matter who provides that, but you absolutely have to ensure that they're in compliance with the industry. It's fully comprehensive, addresses those 11 areas 
of upset training, not just techniques, those 11 areas including human factors, aerodynamics, and the other aspects that we discussed earlier. Go ahead and go ahead to that uh, URL, download that information, and help your education start today on seeking a solution. On behalf of the NBAA Safety Committee, I'd like to thank you for taking your time to watch this video series.